Hey there, welcome again YouTubers to another Game of Thrones What If video. Today I'm going to be doing a video that has been requested about a million times since uh, about two seasons ago. But I didn't think it was time in order to make a determination as to what would change. So right now, this is now the time we're going to be diving into it. Which is, what if Ramsay Bolton had defeated Jon Snow at the Battle of the Bastards? What would have changed in the Game of Thrones universe? What would have changed with the North and the rest of the country? What would have gone down? And we're going to talk about this in a second, but first, I'm going to just give a little bit of a recap what did happen at the Battle of the Bastards, so we can dive into possible changes. So we have Ramsay Bolton, who is now the Warden of the North after killing his father, Roos. He has the Karstarks, the Umbers, and a few other houses of the North going up against Jon Snow and his ragtag group of wildlings and, you know, a few other random small houses in the North. So you have them, they face off. Ramsay's troops are killing Jon's. John is in a really bad way, they're about to die, but then all of a sudden Sansa and Littlefinger come in with the army of the Vale, and they end up saving the day and essentially winning Winterfell for Jon Snow. John is now Warden of the North, the Boltons are all dead, hooray, we all move forward. However, what would happen if this didn't go down? So for this scenario to work, really the turning point in the whole battle was Littlefinger arriving with the Vale. Let's pretend for one reason or another, Littlefinger doesn't show up with the Vale, and Jon's pretty much on his own. So the outcome of this battle goes according to Ramsay's plan, basically. Jon is stuck in the middle of that whole mosh pit pile in there, and he's gonna end up probably either dying or just being severely hurt. But what we do know is that battle is going to be lost for sure. Most of the troops, if not every single one of them, is going to be killed by the Boltons. For sure all the Wildlings will be killed because the Northerners hate the Wildlings, particularly the Umbers. So they're all going to be dead, that means Tormund, absolutely dead, and that means 1-1 one -one is going to be dead as well. But all the Wildlings south of the Wall will definitely end up being killed. And you have most of the troops from the other houses being killed as well, but we do know one person who more than likely is going to be left alive, and that is going to be Jon Snow. Since Jon Snow is the head of the Rebellion trying to take back Winterfell from the Boltons, Ramsay being who he is, he will not be content with the idea of him just dying flat out. He's going to need to make a statement with Jon Snow, so he is going to, for sure, publicly or privately, going to be flaying the hell out of Jon Snow. For a few different reasons, I mean the biggest one obviously he's a Bolton, but just like a fun little, you know, a fun little twist to it is, the fact that the Starks were the ones that outlawed flaying in the North, and Jon's a Stark, so Ramsay would get a sick pleasure in that. I don't think he would do like a reek thing with him, because I don't, I don't think it would work. Also, Jon doesn't have as weak a constitution as Theon. Jon's mentally much tougher than Theon ever was. So, of course, with no Jon, that means there's no Jon as King of the North to go meet with Daenerys when she eventually comes to Westeros. And that means that the North and the rest of the country is absolutely boned when it comes to fighting the Night King and the White Walkers. They're absolutely screwed because they're not going to know anything about Dragonglass. Sam may send word, but everyone's going to go, pfft, stupid. Because Ramsay's not going to go meet with Daenerys on Dragonstone if he were to ever get that note from Daenerys, which probably would because Tyrion sent that letter to Jon because they kind of knew each other and knew that they were reasonable. So chances are everyone would absolutely be screwed and Dragonglass would not be mined. Also another quick hot note, Davos would absolutely be dead. The poor man would lose more than just his little finger bones. Oh, speaking of one Stark, let's go to the other Stark, Sansa. Sansa, who was responsible for getting this army of the Vale to come help them, in the scenario of course, she would fail. And she made a promise to Jon, she would not go back under Ramsay's protection. So without a doubt, she would end up killing herself, which means her old plotline from season seven on is going to be removed, which I'm sure quite a few of you would not be too sad about happening because Sansa is very annoying to many people. That means that Arya is gonna end up being the only female heir left to Winterfell, but we'll get more into that later. However, this is where it gets a little weird. If Ramsay had won the Battle of the Bastards with that whole no John going to Dragonstone thing, that means that Daenerys probably actually keeps all three of her dragons intact. As weird as that is to say, it was probably a good thing for Daenerys that John were to die in this scenario, except no dragon babies. Politically, it is very interesting if the Boltons maintain Winterfell because right before all of this happened, the Boltons and the Lannisters were on really bad footing. The Boltons had just married themselves to Sansa Stark, which Littlefinger orchestrated, but Littlefinger had told Cersei it wasn't exactly the case. Cersei was really upset. Littlefinger negotiated a deal where he would end up getting Winterfell and be Warden of the North if he were to take Winterfell back from the Boltons in the name of the Lannisters. So there's that going on, but I think there's a chance that Cersei could reforge an alliance with the Boltons 
Bolton's considering it's just Ramsey Bolton and not Roos that she would be dealing with. Also, she has other fish to fry like Daenerys. So if she has the North on her side, that would be extremely helpful considering the North fending off dragons would be incredibly useful. Obviously, it wouldn't be a perfect scenario. There would still be northern houses that wouldn't be totally on the Bolton side, but he would have main control over the north because I think a house like maybe the Manderleys would probably fall to the wayside and they would be with the Karstarks and the Umbers. And once you have the Boltons, the Karstarks, Umbers, and Manderleys, the north is basically yours. Oh, fun fact, with Ramsay killing Jon Snow, you know what that means? The Boltons are going to get themselves some Valyrian steel, which they've never had. It's kind of like a last F you to the Starks and also to the Mormons. So yeah, pretty much the Starks are wiped off the map, except for Bran Stark, who is out there somewhere. He's either going to be at the Wall or he's going to be wandering around in the North. Oh, but wait, we almost forgot about Arya. Did you forget her? I didn't forget her. Arya Stark is another huge factor in this scenario. Now, when Arya returned to Westeros, she met Hot Pie at the Inn. And do you remember what she said? She said she was going to King's Landing to kill Cersei Lannister, which is very likely considering she just wiped out all of the Freys not too long before. So, the only reason why she ended up going to Winterfell and seeing her family instead of continuing her mission to King's Landing was because of Hot Pie. Hot Pie had let her know that the Starks had retaken Winterfell. Otherwise, she would have gone to King's Landing, she would have killed Cersei Lannister within an episode or two. We don't know exactly how long, but it took her two episodes to get to Winterfell. So, it would have been around that time, Cersei more than likely would have met her death while Arya was wearing the face of someone else. It would have been some pretty gruesomely awesome cool stuff for all of us fans. So let's pretend it's episode 3 or 4. If Cersei ends up dying during this time period, what happens with the rest of the Lannister forces? Well, chances are that Euron being the main ally of Cersei Lannister, you would think that maybe he would just cut it off right there because he wants to end up becoming the King of the Seven Kingdoms in a partnership with Cersei Lannister. Chances are that wouldn't go down. If Cersei dies, Jaime sort of becomes the de facto head of the Seven Kingdoms as King. Uh, don't know if that's the best thing for everybody. However, Euron doesn't really have another game in town. Euron could try to take the throne by force if he would like to, but he definitely can't hop to the other side with Daenerys. Because by this point, he had already attacked the Greyjoy ships, had already taken Yara, Theon had already escaped, he had already helped kill the Sand Snakes, and Ilaria Sand was already taken prisoner down below the Red Keep. So, that would have been a really difficult proposition for Euron to somehow just switch over to Daenerys. Now, the rest of it would probably continue on as it did with Daenerys' armies fighting the Lannister armies. The only difference is, if for some reason, a white were to be brought to King's Landing, which it wouldn't be in this scenario because no one's looking north, but if it were to be brought to King's Landing, Jaime would actually open his eyes and pay attention to what's happening rather than ignore it like Cersei Lannister had. Okay, so that's roughly what happens if Ramsay Bolton ends up winning and stays ward in the north for a good period of time. However, we're missing one major factor that I already mentioned before. What if this goes down, Ramsay wins, but then Littlefinger follows through with his promise to Cersei, which is once John and Ramsay end up fighting over Winterfell, himself and the Vale end up swooping in to take over the castle from the winner of that battle. What exactly would have happened? Now, first I want to say if all of the North is united behind the Boltons, it'd be difficult for the Vale to take Winterfell. However, the Vale has a big army and they are very well trained. The Knights of the Vale have been trained in pretty much in every terrain you can ask for, so they would actually be pretty good up in the North. So let's say they take on Winterfell with some support of some of the northern houses. Maybe they get the Manderleys. I don't know, but they would get some kind of support. Let's say they take it, Ramsay ends up dying, all the Boltons dead, gone. Littlefinger has Winterfell. Now he's going to have a problem with that no matter what, because if they don't like the Boltons, the rest of the North is definitely not going to like Littlefinger, who's not from the North. Like John said, they're loyal to their own. So this is going to be a difficult proposition for him. The only way it's going to work is if he gets a Stark to be with him. The only two that are going to be available are Bran, of course, who's the rightful heir to Winterfell, or Arya Stark, who could end up going to Winterfell and piling up with Littlefinger. However, that's probably not going to be the case. Whether it be by getting killed because Arya just doesn't like Littlefinger and knows that he is mischievous, or the fact that Bran would be around and would let Arya know that he did mischievous things, similar to what actually happened this past season. The only way he could realistically survive for a period of time is if he tells all the Northern Lords, said, it's the Lannisters, let's go get them. And then the Vale, the North, they all take on a common enemy, which is the Lannisters, which a lot of people could get behind, but it's not gonna last forever. They would never accept Littlefinger as their actual ruler, especially with someone like Sansa dead and Arya who would never marry Littlefinger. 
Oh, and he'd also have to side with Daenerys. And regardless, he would try to anyway because he knows where the power is. He knows that Daenerys is going to end up winning anyway against the Lannisters, so he has to be on her good side to begin with. And he probably would try to angle his way into getting a marriage with Daenerys, which he would have a hell of a case. He would be the Warden of the North, and he would also be Lord of the Vale. That's a pretty powerful resume he's got going on. The only one who actually has a better resume to marry would be Jaime, and that's it. Which, by the way, I don't think it would be a bad idea if Daenerys were to try to marry Jaime. That would kind of solve all the problems. But they're never going to do that. So there may be a period of time where he has Winterfell in the Vale. But the problem is... It's not going to last very long. No matter what, he will be killed in that role. So really what I think happens is no matter what, if Ramsay's the head or Littlefinger's the head, for the most part, the war between Daenerys and the Lannisters, yes, it adds and subtracts maybe a few allies, but I think ultimately the outcome is going to be roughly the same. Daenerys is going to end up ultimately winning this whole thing. The only difference is the outlook looking north of the wall is so much more bleak in comparison to than if Jon had lived. John being alive is the one pushing everyone towards looking beyond the wall, trying to make all the living fight against the dead. But that, <laughs> that is not going well in this scenario. So mobilizing against them in war is worse. But you could argue that would actually end up being better for the living right now in this present time. Because with John being alive and going beyond the wall, he ended up attracting Daenerys' dragons beyond the wall as well. And that's what the Night King ended up using to take down the wall and march his army south. So, you could argue, if Jon had left his plot armor on the floor of his bedroom that day, maybe we would have actually been in a better spot in Westeros because the Night King would never have gotten his zombie dragon. You know what? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say we would have been better off with Jon Snow dying at the Battle of the Bastards. But that's going to do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed this what-if scenario. I've been wanting to do this one for a long time. Now we can finally fulfill it. Thank you everyone who had suggested this video. It was really fun to make. Also, if you have suggestions for another video, please leave them down below in the comment section. I would love to hear from all of you about what exactly you would like to see going on in the future. Reminder, I'm going to be doing more Star Wars and Walking Dead videos as the season approaches for that TV show and film, so look out for those during the week. You can also check out more of my videos right here. You can see some of my stuff from my Walking Dead playlist in addition to my Game of Thrones videos, so you can sate yourself a little bit more while we wait for season eight. Also, if you want to see more videos, you can click on subscribe button right here to make sure you get all the notifications right to the front of your page. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing day. You take care and goodbye.